and welcome to New Junction. We have a special underclothes inspection for you today with the Hornby Class 800, the Hitachi prototype test livery kit. Um, this is a limited run of 500 models um, and a set I've had on pre-order for nearly two years now. So I'm uh, quite excited for it to finally be here. I didn't think I'd see the day. <laughs> The Class 800 is the natural progression of the Class 395, the Javelin. Um, and you'll see it up and down the country. Um, and believe it or not, for all its investment, um, its main aim is to save about 15 minutes on major routes. So, uh, <laughs> um, although that's quite a lot, it's not a lot in the same breath. But uh, model-wise, it's absolutely fantastic. So let's take a closer look at the... Uh, livery. As you've probably seen the Great Western version of this Class 800 is already out. Um, I will be borrowing one for my layout but um, unfortunately the one doesn't have a permanent place due to the fact that I'm based on the East Coast Main Line. This model seemed like the obvious solution until Hornby uh, hopefully releases another livery um, in the future but who knows when that will come as far as the model goes in general I'm really pleased that Hornby have done it um, it shows that they uh, they can still produce items of quality um, and it also shows that uh, um, New Era is very much at the forefront of Hornby's mindset especially with um, this being their major product release of this year. Um, so it's very nice to see. As you can see with the patterning, it's uh, not so much a paint scheme as it's more transfers. So on this model, for example, all these, uh, um, I don't know what you'd call them, these effects on the side of the loco, it's just one big giant transfer. Um, but... Uh, from a distance it's absolutely crisp um, and spot on as you'd imagine. There's never such a, a slight element of the the beige um, colouring um, which just has a feel of it being unpainted um, and sort of bare plastic about it but uh, um, it works well because it does match the actual livery. Looking to the uh, rear of the engine car you can see uh, a bit more of the detail. Um, for example, at the back you get this digital display. It is part of the transfer, but it's a nice touch and from normal viewing level, um, it's nice to see. Um, just while I'm here, these grommets, these plastic grommets, that look like they've been positioned wonky, um, they are, there are four of them per engine, and they all appear as if they've just been stuck on wrong. But actually on the real loco itself, they are uh, at an odd angle, so <laughs> it's a happy misfortune for Hornby, I'm sure. Looking towards the uh, the nose cab, obviously you've got the uh, the details of things like the windscreen wiper. Um, the actual cab itself is quite enclosed. It actually starts, the dash starts quite far back, if you can see. Um, but that does have full panelling and I'll try and show you that in a second um, which is really nice touch considering this is one of the least visible um, uh, dashboards especially with the smaller side windows um, the doors themselves do move so I'm sure they they can go in to allow you to open them should that be required but um, um, they don't push in like they're not on springs or anything so presumably you have to take the uh, um, the case off to remove them. I'm not too sure. It's also worth noting that the front of the loco, it does come off if you were to couple it up. Um, there were um, questions around how practical that is. It does have a NEM pocket that doesn't move, so um, some modification is required to couple it up. You probably wouldn't couple up the limited edition set. I mean, I don't think most many people will be using them. Um, but on the Great, Rest, Great Western version, um, 
you may do so. That requires some modification. Now hopefully you can see the dash from here in the cab. You can see it is a stickered front but um, detail wise that's uh, quite amazing really. You see all the dials and buttons and things quite clearly. Um, and as I say it's quite a difficult cab to see in. Um, but um, that's a really nice touch from Hornby to show they're paying attention and with ever rising prices um, they're adding touches of detail which um, justify certain costs. The rear car um, for this set is uh, very plain obviously it doesn't have the uh, the red effect on it which is normal um, but it does still carry its detail very well all the lettering is extremely crisp um, it still has lots of uh, details um, it actually makes it quite a fine model um, even the uh, things such as these the orange strip here or um, the digital display all the little tiny signs um, they're extremely extremely well done um, and it just feels like a nice quality model going to the underside of the model um, the chip is mounted not inside the actual case but on underneath um, and through removing these three small screws um, you get into it nice and easily it just pops off and allows you to put in a uh, four function 8-pin uh, chip. Um, what I also notice in the um, instruction manuals um, is this space here underneath the grill is a pre-cut out and perfect fit for one of their rectangle speakers so presumably Hornby will release a sound chip in the future. Um, it, again it just shows forward thinking by Hornby in a time of criticism for them um, it just shows that they're preparing for every avenue. Now, first thing to note is when you uh, do take out these screws on the bottom of these uh, locos, um, they are extremely tight in. I don't know if that's the uh, calibration the machine should be at, but um, they're absolutely rock solid. Um, so you've got to have the right crosshead. Um, if it's not quite adequate, you will uh, damage the screw quite easily. Now one slight bugbear of general modern multiple units is that uh, you do have to uh, not only add a digital chip to uh, the front as you'd expect, you also have to add one to the uh, rear as well just to get the lights working. Um, so this model in particular, including the uh, 5 car version, will require two chips just to get the uh, running lights on as well as obviously the motor. That being said, installation of the chips is easy peasy, no more faffing around with the body of a loco. Um, you quite literally, once unscrewed, pull the top off, um, off both units, they come off super easy. That then reveals the innards, and as you can see, fairly standard. Um, you've got your blanking chip on your board, um, so we'll just pull those off and replace them with the 8 pin chips, nice and easy. So there we have it, the two 8-pin uh, chips now in situ. Um, now unlike normal, um, the actual slots for the chips don't have the indication number 1, um, which is unhelpful if it's not the logical way around. I put it this way around because uh, presumably the chip has to go towards the space, um, so uh, we, sh we shall see. So I'm not going to screw the bottoms on until we've uh, tested it on the uh, track. So here we are on the uh, loft floor on my temporary programming track. Um, all we need to do quickly before any train goes in, just program that to be number 80, as close as I can get it to uh, 800. And there we are. Now what is apparent with these uh, engines is that the CVs do need to be changed because uh, especially on the uh, directional lights, as they both think they're going forward. Um, an easy fix, it's just CV number 29 has to go from number 6 to number 7 on one of the locos. 
So I want to do that now. And as if by magic, just that quick fix, and now we've got uh, directional lighting in the, in the right way. Now the 800 model itself comes with the coach lighting as standard. Um, it's nicely yellowed out, it's not um, just a, uh, a white light. Um, I'm not sure if that's the LED or the uh, the black tint of the uh, the acrylic that's used, but um, again, it's a nice touch. From this angle, you can just see the uh, the dashboard on the inside of the cab. Um, obviously, through the door, you can see uh, <laughs> some of the electrical wiring for the uh, the actual lighting of the engine. But uh, um, going to the cab detail, it's just nice to be able to uh, to see that. So now it's the fun bit. Let's see how well uh, this engine performs. It is a uh, five pole skew motor, so they should be relatively smooth. Um, it is set as standard to 28 speed steps, that's the 8 pin chip standard. Um, and as you can see, this is speed step one. This is unrunning and out of the box, so <laughs> already you can see how smooth it is. So if I speed that up, And I'll let this train get to running in on my layout. So all in all, the 800 model from Hornby does have some Mark I flaws, um, mainly on the longer version. Um, I was meant to be joined by the 5 car uh, Great Western version tonight, but that's sadly had to go back to Hornby due to some faults, which I'll discuss in another video. This model, however, absolutely spotless, um, faultless. Um, I think it's a very brave step from Hornby, especially in the current climate. It's a brand new engine, it's modern image, and it's uh, brand new tooling, which um, for them in their current state is a very brave step. And I think uh, as, as far as we can do, I think we should support any sort of brave steps by these manufacturers at the moment. So this gets a uh, 10 out of 10 for me. I think the details there. Um, it's got potential. They've opened it up for, left it open for sound, um, and it fits, of course, any modern image layout, um, which can only be a good thing. Right. Thank you for watching this video. I'm now going to uh, go and have a play with my uh, new engine. <laughs> this will not be staying in the box. I don't care how uh, limited they say it is. Um, fingers crossed that they release some coaches. I doubt they will, <laughs> because. Uh, if there's only 500 of them, I don't think many people will want coaches, or be using them. But um, if they do, I'll be the first in the queue. As ever, thank you for watching. Um, keep an eye out for um, my review of the uh, Great Western version, um, because that'll be interesting. <laughs> because as I say, I've had a few problems with that one. Nothing that can't be sorted, I may add. But uh, it'll make for a slightly more interesting video. But... Uh, I'll let you go. Listen to my music. Thanks again, guys. Take care now.